Okay, we're gonna show you how to do a nitrous induction with our new uh, Silhouette Nasal Mask. So I've already prepared the um, nitrous carriage, turned my units on, got my scavenger set, and already set according to this nasal mask. Now the nasal masks come in four different sizes, a pedo, small, medium, and large. Most adults are gonna be a medium large and women tend to have, if they have a smaller nose, tend to be a small. So Chris is gonna be a small. If you have too large of a mask, the patient's not gonna have adequate gas. So um, be sure that you're me measuring, or kind of assessing beforehand uh, what size mask the patient might need. If you're not sure, it, you might you can take the mask, actually you can take the mask out, put a plastic, put it in a Ziploc baggie and you can actually try it on the patient to see if it fits their nose. And if for some reason it's not the right size, you can put it back in the packaging. Okay, just make sure you put a little note on the packaging as the clean mask. So it gets put back in the general supply and um, submit doesn't think it's been used. So, but we already know Chris is gonna be a size small, okay? Now, before you um, put the nasal mask on the patient, you wanna make sure that they have gas coming through the flow meter. Now. With a traditional type of nitrous equipment, uh, we use the four, five, six rule. This particular uh, nasal mask uses less gas than the nasal masks or the nasal hoods used on the, um, the, the bag system. So we're gonna start with three liters of gas, of oxygen. Sorry, I'm gonna, plastic is always on top of here, but I'm gonna pull this down just for visual so you can see here and use my plastic to control. So I'm gonna start with three liters of oxygen right here. Okay. Because I don't wanna put this mask on her without any gas, otherwise she'll try to breathe and nothing will come through, okay? Now there's a little clip right here on the tubing. This clip um, should remain on the tubing, on the smaller tube, and we cl usually clip it to the plastic or the side of the chair what it does, it helps prevent um, the, the connections here with the nasal mask and the tubing from coming apart should the patient suddenly move. So I'll just put that right here on the side and I'm just gonna put it on the upholstery here. If I can get it on there, there we go. We'll find a senior part here. Okay. The mask comes from the front, which is different from the other type of um, system. There's an adhesive strip here and then the port there, that, what actually happens is the scavenger comes out one, uh, gas comes in one way and the scavenger comes out the other way. So you only have one set of tubing near the patient's face on each side. Peel off this strip here. And, and it's sticky. Okay. And then I explained to the patient that we're going to put it across their nose. You want to feed in this into their right nostril. Okay. And you kind of hold it like what is that, a cone? <laughs> and you want to kind of guide it into their nostril like this. Oops. Sorry, I'm looking through my loops here, Chris. And they can help you kind of guide it in there. Kind of push that down in your nose there. Good. Mm -hmm. And then tip it back on to the bridge of their nose. And then take your fingers and do a little bit of a squeeze or a, to seal that, okay? Then the ends, of the, got it in there? The ends go over their ears here on one side thanks for holding that Chris. Mm -hmm. you can rub it on your nose if you want to kind of tighten it there you go okay and then once you got it over their ears you slide up this little ring here like a bow tie okay, just under their chin not too tight but once you recline them back you don't want it to to choke the patient okay so now she's got her mask on it to direct the patient to just put their head back and then you can recline the patient. Ask the patient if they feel like they're breathing okay and that nasal cannula is right in your nose there. Mm -hmm. And you notice that the mask is up against the bottom of her nose and not hanging down on her lip, which is what you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Now that I've got her breathing oxygen, I can go ahead and start titrating her in, okay? Now we're gonna make an assumption that before we do this procedure, we check the patient's vitals okay. and um, we've documented those and um, we do need to keep track of those items. So if you have somebody jot it down for you on a piece of scotch paper or something, if you can't get immediately to the chart to write the note, you can do that. 
So we have to do pre-vitals. That's required by law to do the pre, pre and post vitals. So now that I've got her prepared, I can go ahead and start titrating her. Typically we start with one liter of gas um, nitrous first and then in, increase in half liter increments. Okay. So I'm gonna start with one liter here. Now notice how I'm still at that three, okay? So now I've got three liters of oxygen and one liter of nitrous. Okay, okay, on your nose. okay and this is where um, we never ever go straight to the percentage the patient was at before. We wanna make sure we bring them up to the appropriate um, level for that patient that particular day. Okay. Just felt a little air coming out. A little air there. Then that will happen if the mask, excessively if the mask is too big. The patient will blow out gas here and here. This, this seal here is supposed to design from not drying out their eyes. Um, if you have patient glasses, we put, we put those over the top and that kind of helps hold the nasal mask down a little bit too. No patient glasses, sorry, I forgot that one. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling? Can I go ahead and increase it a little bit? Okay. I'm gonna increase by half liter. So now she's one and a half and three, which is four and a half total liters of gas. You need to keep track of that as well. Starting to feel a little bit effect of it. Mm -hmm. Tell me what symptoms you're having. Are you feeling just relaxed? Just relaxed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any tingling in your fingers, your toes? Sometimes patients will say their lips are a little tingly. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to increase a little bit? Is that okay? Half later, sure. maybe? Okay. So now we're going to increase her up to. Two liters of nitrous and three liters of staying at that three liters of oxygen. Now some um, equipment you can increase one and lower one with the older system. I prefer to do um, get the patient to the optimum percentage, and then once they get at the percentage, um, I document that. Now this dial here will tell you gross percentages. Uh, you want to be able to be tune in more, so you have to do the math, or we have a reference sheet on the side that will help you calculate the percentage. But you can see here, I'll pull this up so you can see. Here, you can see the percentages right down here on the dial. They're not, um, they're kind of a gross percentage. How are you feeling? Okay. So we're going to decide that she's at her optimum percentage right now. And so I have actually um, three liters of oxygen and two liters of nitrous. So that means I have five total liters of gas. Now, in the old system, that would be fine for the volume, but I'm gonna actually lower, because this system, you don't need to have as much gas. So when I lower my oxygen, you can see that the balls change, but it's keeping the same percentage, the same proportion of oxygen to nitrous. So if I keep her at two liters of oxygen and one and a half liters of nitrous, that keeps closer to that 3%, or that three liters of gas that's ideal for this particular system. On occasion, um, sometimes I'll start, instead of starting with the three, I'll start with four, especially uh, large individuals, big tall guys, or large individuals, then, then we can vary from that three to the four. But you shouldn't need to, need to use that old rule with the uh, four, five, six rule uh, that we use with the bag system. And one thing I wanna note too, is that I still have gas in here, even though my gauge on here is, is down to a low percentage. That's because there's still gas in this tank. So I don't want to go, oh, I'm out of gas here and automatically open my other one until this ball drops down. Once these balls start to drop down, if I start, it, it won't completely turn off on a snap. It'll actually just start to drift down. Once you notice that, then you can quickly open up the auxiliary tank and you'll keep that same flow of gas, okay? If you're not paying attention to these, you're doing okay, Chris? If you're not paying attention to these um, balls and they just all, all of a sudden you just like, hey, so I don't feel anything anymore or the balls completely drop, then you have to re and do a re-induction of the patient because you've completely um, eliminated all the gas from their system and they don't, they're not feeling any effects anymore. So you've got to keep an eye on that. All right, so I'm all done. I'm going to go ahead and bring you back, uh, back to uh, reality, Chris. 
Okay, so what we do, instead of just turning everything off, you want to bring them down slowly. It's healthier for the patient. So I'm going to reduce by half a liter. You can keep them there for about a minute. And then we'll reduce again until she's just on straight oxygen. And then when she's on the straight oxygen, we'll leave them on oxygen for at least five minutes, make sure the patient is filling back and ambulatory so they can leave the, leave the facility. Um, before they leave though, we do need to do post-treatment vitals. Okay. And there's a new chart note for WDC. Yes, we'll so. talk about the chart note. Actually, we'll show you, I'll show you the chart note.